welcome to my garden. Uh, thank you so much for all the new subscribers. Um, I, I wanted to say that first. Uh, I'm really, really appreciative of everyone uh, following my video and supporting it uh, and helping it to grow. I'm really, really excited about it. So, and thank you for all the messages. It was really fun to read and stay connected with all of you. I feel like I know you by name because you guys are so great at interacting. And um, anyway, today for any of the new subscribers, because we had few, uh, few new subscriber, uh, subscribers, um, I wanted to say that I do garden in zone 8B. We are in southern France. We are about, uh, we're, we're close to Spain and um, you know, and we have a, uh, we're close to Mediterranean, let's just say, probably the best way to describe. So anyway, um, today I'm doing a few things. I want to go ahead and plant uh, rod, uh, other deciduous azalea. Now this one is, uh, uh, I love, love this variety of azalea. I have spider webs on it. I found this in a really great deal in a little. Uh, usually they you know, they can be around 20 euro in here in Europe. I was really excited to find them. I don't even know what color it is because the tag uh, for all of those azaleas were mixed colors. So I don't know if it's orange or yellow, but I do know uh, that uh, no matter what color it turns out, it's going to be gorgeous. I have several of these varieties and, in my garden and I absolutely adore it. I think they're very easy to take care of. They're not as finicky about the acidity of the soil. So um, I feel like I have better success at growing them. And when we go around, I'll show you some other varieties that I have in the garden and they're doing really, really good. I think if you just keep up with the moisture, they will do really well. So anyway, I'd like to plant this, uh, this deciduous azalea. Also, um, I am going to plant uh, um, brush bottle brush, <laughs> bottle brush shrubs uh, in a container today and I'll go ahead and show you that in just a minute. Um, also, uh, I was going to transplant uh, Clemata really quick. So yesterday, um, I will show you in just a moment where I'm going to plant it. So I planted in a bit of a shadier area and it really just didn't do well. It's been sitting there for a while. Um, I think they do like a little more sun. I thought they it will get enough sun, but it didn't. And so, um, in fact, I thought I lost them last year because I planted two, um, two each on the side of the arbor and one I transplanted already um, early this season and it's doing phenomenal. It's doing really good. I, I think it's just thanking me because uh, just to move him from where he was because he was so stagnant and not going anywhere. Um, however, and I thought the other side, which was kind of buried in a hydrangeas a little bit, I thought I lost it. Um, and um, so it was to my surprise early this spring, I really, I noticed that it just keep coming out and, um, and I decided to move this one as well. It's a really beautiful variety. I, this is, this Klimata belongs to the um, group two. <laughs> it started raining. <laughs> we probably need to go home and then we'll continue again in just a moment. Okay, so rain stopped um, because George had his umbrella on <laughs> standing there. We really needed to go. Anyway, let's just start uh, where we left off on, my, on a clematis. So this is the clemata that I planted. And um, as I was explaining before the rain started coming, that um, uh, I did plant in, the, in a more of a shady area. I assumed that it will have enough sun, but it didn't. Anyway, it's, a, it's coming back. So I will go ahead and replace uh, re replant them in a... Um, or transplant it in a different spot where I, I think it will be really happy and I'll show you where it's going. But this is the Climata I wanted to show you and I can't even pronunciate this name. It's P-I-I-L-U. Um, P-U, I'm not sure how to say that. But anyway, this is a, this a Climata is really beautiful. It has lavender um, edges on the petals and then you can see it has a nice beautiful kind of a fuchsia color strikes um, in the center of the petals. And so anyway, this one is, uh, this belongs to um, group two Climata, which is a large Climata. I'm excited uh, that it comes, it came back and so we can go ahead and plant them. All right, so what I'd like to do today though, I want to go around as you can and show you some things that are 
blooming at the moment. Uh, you can see the color is pretty much gone. Um, I, kind, I deadheaded all the tulips to let them uh, start fading away and feeding the bulbs uh, before I remove the foliage. So the foliage will stay for a little bit until um, they all yellowed out and feed, uh, feed the bulb. Um, then I will go ahead and remove everything and then start tra transitioning into the summer. But I have some um, uh, cl um, clematis open now, a few roses are open, some azaleas, and then some peonies, which, you know, we could go ahead and take a look at them really quick. And there are some irises that are open as well. We'll just look at that, and then we'll go ahead and start my projects, and I'll explain more on the projects as we go. All right, so let's just go this way, just call for a really quick tour. And you can see I have beautiful irises here. These are one of my favorites in the garden. It has this beautiful peach color with the gorgeous lavender petals. Love, love this one. Um, and so as you can see, also, I have Shando's Beauty uh, uh, hybrid tea roses that I planted last fall. And I have five that I grouped here. There is one, two, three, four, and five. And all, all three of them are open, uh, and they're huge. Uh, the bush itself is small because they're planted only last year. But the flowers are amazing, and they do have a beautiful scent. Look at these gorgeous flowers. Absolutely, I am just absolutely in love with these roses. You can see that. And then there are other, this one has three uh, flowers on it. This one, I have just one. And this one is kind of in the latest stage of the flowering uh, period, but it is beautiful still. And uh, it keeps the flower for a, for, a little, for a while. They don't just drop their, le their petals very quickly. Beautiful, beautiful rose. So here you can see my climbing rose. I've actually started deadheading already. Um, some of them are already starting to fade away, and I started deadheading. Hopefully, we will have another flush. But usually, the second or third flushes are the rose is not as um, uh, heavy as the first one. So this is going to be the first beautiful flush of the flowers. So we go this way here. Uh, Ito peonies are doing gorgeous. So this one is a coral weed, and I love, love this one. It has a beautiful uh, pastel pink with the, uh, almost, it's not really fuchsia. It's very deep, um, maybe it is fuchsia centers. You can see that it's so beautiful. So this one, we have another peony blooming here. And this one's supposed to be Hillary when I purchased that. But I don't know. It doesn't look like Hillary to me because Hillary seems a little more pink. Um, this one just, I don't know, it doesn't look like the color in the pictures, but I love it. It's beautiful. It could be Julia Rose. I'm not quite sure what variety this is, but it is really beautiful. You can see it has a interesting variations of colors around on the petals, almost uh, peach, a little pink, a little yellow, but it is, it is really a beautiful variety, and it's doing really good. You can see just as happy as it can be. Here, these are my absolute favorite herbaceous peonies. Uh, I'm not a you know big herbaceous peony fan, although I love them, and I have several in my garden. I do uh, love the Ito's and tree peonies more, I should say. But this variety of the... A herbaceous peony is one of my absolute favorite. This one called Coral Sunset, and uh, they're quite sturdy as well. I I staked uh, this one. This one is not even staked. You can see how sturdy these uh, flowers are. Their their stems are really strong, and I will plant more of them in my garden because I absolutely love it. There is three different varieties of these coral varieties. There is a Coral Charm, Coral Sunset, and then um, Coral. Uh, pink Hawaiian coral, and I have the other one as well, and I'll show you. They're very similar. It, a little, there is a little difference, though. So these ones are just starting to open. You can see I have here, uh, in, one here, here, and then there is another one planted right there, and I really wanted this area to be uh, to bloom in this gorgeous, gorgeous coral color. They're semi-double. They're not fully double, but they're very beautiful. So um, here I have, we have another rose. Oh, look at this. This one is blooming too. This is a peace rose, a hybrid tea. 
they're gorgeous one of my absolute favorite I am looking for the Chicago piece though I can't find them in Europe uh, one of my absolute favorite one was the Ch Chicago piece when I was in Colorado and I can't find one here hopefully one day I will find them but this is a regular piece and it's still very beautiful love this rose and it will progress as as um, the flower starts aging it will have more pink you can see like this one here uh, has more pink on the edges and it starts aging very beautiful hybrid tea okay so here we have more uh, irises that are opening you can see there um, um, bearded German irises and then uh, here I have another hybrid tea rose look how huge they are this year looking really really good this one is Edith Piaf uh, hybrid tea rose and it has this beautiful dark color and it's just glorious these ones are fading away a little bit as you can see but I have a lot more buds um, there are some in here that are just opened not too long ago and I think you can see this one's a little better and they're absolutely stunning this is a very very beautiful variety I love this one and more irises bearded German irises looking really pretty we had some rain last night which was really nice um, anyway but uh, yeah they're looking really really good but they're a little wilted from the weight of the water as you can see uh, but they're still looking good and the clematis are almost finished looks like this one had a little bit of a slug damage which I need to probably put some bait there for that for the slug bait and but this is doing really really beautiful this uh, clemata Henry is one of my favorite one of my absolute favorite and I think I will have more of more of that in some point other places so let's just go this way really quick and see what else is blooming oh this one is um this is a pink hawaiian coral variety herbaceous peony and you can see this one has a uh more of a pastel pink you can see the difference because this other ones um this is a coral sunset and you can see it has a deeper color uh, versus um, versus the pink Hawaiian coral this one has a bit of a more uh, mellower pink color if anyone um, likes the more of a pastel pink this might be a choice for you beautiful beautiful peonies so uh, formal rose garden is doing really really good and this is a really great example to show you what it's like when you amend the soil around the rose bushes and give them good food versus not look you, you can see all these roses uh, you, you can see right here that I amended the soil and I gave uh, amended with s uh, some sand uh, I amended with uh, some manure again this year just to give extra drainage etc um, so uh, and look at look at this these are doing really good they almost doubled in size but you can see this two I haven't gotten yet <laughs> I haven't gotten to this two yet and you can see the difference between these ones and this two I really need to get that done today after the video because they really need it As you, you can see when you give them a little love you, you can give them a little attention and uh, they really thrive it just makes such a big difference all right let's go this way and then here we have a climbing rose open Claire Renaissance I love this rose it has a beautiful symbol pink color absolutely stunning this year you can see I we planted this last year and I have several buds this year already very excited about this uh, let's go here we have uh, I have a uh, more hybrid teas opening you can see this one this one called uh, is, um, Isabel Otisier I believe I'll double check that uh, but this one is a beautiful as you can see it has a little bit of a rain damage on it but this one is opening uh, this is a new bud you can see how beautiful this one is it has that beautiful yellow pink apricots salmon uh, has all the colors just all the beautiful colors in that one rose and there this is another variety of the coral uh, coral line this one is actually called coral charm and this one is kind of in between the sunset and a pink Hawaiian coral uh, because this one this one I think the coral charm has a, a, probably the medium pink so I see that coral sunset has deeper pink then uh, coral charm has less pink but the corals uh, pink Hawaiian coral has a, a less 
uh, less coral. It's more of a pink color. So anyway, uh, lighter, lighter color. Um, so let's go here really quick and see what's going on. I have. This one is not open yet. So oh, it has one bloom. You can see that one very well. It will open. It has lots of buds on it. It's pretty. And I think maybe that one's been there for a little bit too. So I ha we have a um, uh, David Austin Rose open here. This one is Grace, and it's so beautiful. I did notice, though, it's very sensitive to the sun. They, I think I might have to move them. Maybe we'll see how they do this year. Maybe they're acclimating. We'll just see how they do uh, with the, giving all extra water and stuff. Um, if they don't do well, I have to move them in a pot shade area. They are, they will, t they will t very quickly, they put their heads down. You constantly have to, to keep them moist. I think they will benefit from uh, with a little from a little bit of a shade if you are planting these roses. But it is it is absolutely beautiful, beautiful shrub rose, big flowers, beautiful. I absolutely adore them. So this is Grace. We have Double Delight. This uh, rose has opened. It's been open for a little bit, so it's already fading away. But it was really, really beautiful. You can see we have a uh, German bearded iris is open there. Uh, new Ethiopian that is open, um, which this is the first time I see the color. I can tell you what variety this is, but it is really, really pretty. It bloomed. This this is the first year, first bloom of that bush. So here we have more bearded irises, blue, beautiful. Um, so you, we, we, I have a climbing rose there, Claire Renaissance. This is another one which I'm hoping to climb over on this structure here. And then this clematta I planted just the early this spring. This one is a, sh a pink chiffon, uh, and it is beautiful. You can see it's doing really, really good. Very happy, produced lots of buds, and it's beautiful color. This one also does belong to group two clematis. So I have another Ethiopian here that it's blooming. Very, very pretty, looking really good. Love that one. And then just here really quick, I think this one might be Coral Charm Peony. Oh, no, this is a pink Hawaiian, Hawaiian coral. And you can see how, how beautiful this color is, though. And it seems like it has quite a few petals. Gorgeous, gorgeous herbaceous peony. I have another peony here. This one is called First Arrival. And this one is very beautiful. It has a gorgeous lilac color. I don't know if you can see it well, but it's so beautiful. It has a very lilac-y um, lavender color to it. So I ha we have uh, rhododendron is doing good. I decided to put a rhododendron that I am going to have a beautiful rhododendron in my garden. And I think what I'm going to do is dig method where I will plant a container inside of the ground and actually provide with acidic soil because I do love rhododendrons. I want to have them in my garden and I want to have them beautiful. And so I just have to go through that after these blooms are finished, I will get this one done. Now, this one is a beautiful rose. We purchased this last year in Ravel Market with our friends. You guys probably saw the video. This one called a Smile of the Heaven. I think this is a French variety, and it has uh, really, really beautiful colors. It's just starting to open. So let's go here really quick. We'll see what else is going on here. Um, we, I have a clematis open here. This one we just planted. It's the Kiri de Kanawa. Look at these double blooms. is absolutely stunning. Look at that. So beautiful. This one is starting to open. And then we have a red star clematis that's been climbing this uh, tree for like the longest time. And it has a gorgeous double blooms as well. There is a rhododendron that opened here, beautiful lavender color. I think I'm going to do the same thing with this one because I absolutely adore this and I think it will just thrive as soon as I get them into the better you know, soil that they actually need. Um, Azaleas are starting to fade away, but they're doing really good. This one called Joanna's Red. 
and they bloomed so beautifully. I think I'm going to find more of them. Um, they didn't seem, they didn't mind at all the soil. They did really well, and I think I might have to spread them because their color is so deep and beautiful that I'd like to see them all the way through. Here we have a Mondstadt wood uh, rose that I opened. It's fading away already, but it was absolutely stunning and it had a gorgeous, gorgeous aroma to it. Uh, it's already starting to fade away. I planted them just this last uh, fall or winter. Uh, so anyway, it's still very small. And this Japanese maple, Autumn Moon, has the most beautiful colors, very amber colors, gorgeous, absolutely stunning. Um, just love this. And it's, it was very small when I planted last year. It's doing really good. This clemata here is also opening and looking very healthy. This one is called Vieux de Lyon. I think it is fr a French variety and it's very pretty. So really excited about that. This one, you know, I think I purchased this one as, as a Rebecca, but I am just not sure if this is Rebecca. I had Rebecca before when I was in Colorado and I felt like it was more of a red color. So I don't know. We'll see. Maybe we'll change some as it goes and grows, but I'm hoping for this to kind of take over this fence. It will be really pretty when it does. Um, all right. And then I have one more uh, rhododendron to show you that it's opened by the house. Let's go check that out really quick. And I wanted to just really quick bring to your attention to this Gothiera that we planted last spring. No, no, I'm sorry, last uh, winter. Um, and look, they are, have a really good new growth, doing really good. I tapped the soil a little bit with some more acidic soil because they do like a bit of acidity to their soil. And they just perked up and kind of give started giving that beautiful height uh, as a hedge almost and I know that they will start filling in more uh, this, this probably this entire place will be just filled in and then hopefully to drape down a little bit with their beautiful red berries in the Christmas time all right let's go check out this rhododendron and then we'll get to planting really quick so there is a rhododendron that just opened this year. Last year I didn't have any buds. Uh, this early season or last winter I went ahead and amended soil really well. You can see I, uh, I added more slay rock so I'm hoping to give more acidity to it and some uh, more uh, manure etc. Some sand trying to give a good drainage but it, it, it's, it bloomed. Look at this beautiful bloom. Isn't this just gorgeous? Oh absolutely gorgeous. So that, and then there is a just clematis that opened this one called Veronica's Choice, and it has a light lavender color. Um, it's doing really pretty. This was one of my first clematis I planted early, early on, and it just got tossed around several places, got transplanted several times. I think this year it's finally, he kind of, feels like it's home and, um, you know, coming to, to its own doing really good anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this tour this is all what's going on in the garden at the moment um i'll, I'll go we'll go ahead and get this uh, bottle brushes planted in the containers really quick let's go talk about that and then we'll come back and plant this beautiful azalea transplant clemata and we will be finished for today okay so bottle brushes we have a my wheelbarrow we'll just move out of the way really quick so as we talked last time about creating a nice um, entrance to your home and home property, etc. So this is our entrance and this area gets really, really hot sun. Um, I purchased this uh, bottle brush bushes maybe almost a month ago and uh, I found them in a really really good deal in our local nursery and I was looking for this particular color because it has a very deep beautiful fuchsia color and um, uh, so they will they will bloom I think that I mean you can see they're starting to bloom I think probably will bloom, bloom about this time um, and then they will fade away but the reason why I chose them is because for, first they don't require lots of water they're pretty drought tolerant um, and then they also will stay evergreen all year round which is really good and this wall here you can see it's just it's so much wall and there is nothing to soften this area but it gets the hot hot sun um, so what I decided, I need to put this away, 
Um, I decided to go ahead and plant uh, uh, plant these uh, bushes because they will get quite big. They will fill this container. So they go about 140 to 200 centimeters tall. So they're about two meters tall, which, you know, I can I can prune them and I can keep them in check. But uh, I purchased them about a month ago and then I, has, I was waiting to get the container. So it took me a little bit to get the containers. Um, and in the meantime, they were really drying out in the wind and there's not much soil in these containers at all. I kind of packed with some uh, manure and stuff trying to keep something that they would hold the water for them until I was able to get the containers. So finally, I was able to get them. They are so ready to go into the ground. We need to go ahead and plant them today. I don't remember. I, I didn't check the hardiness on these plants, but when we release the video, we'll get the hardiness of the plant uh, or the uh, zone uh, for these plants on the screen so you can see how hardy this, these ones are. Anyway, I'm at 8B. I know I'm safe, uh, but I know that some of you are gardening in a colder zone, so we'll find that out for you. Um, anyway, we'll just go ahead and get this planted, but it has a beautiful color. I love the color. And it has those, maybe we can see from the very uh, close up, it has those um, it's almost, there's there's some lights like that. I, I don't know what it's called, but uh, they have those ends. You can see those little dots. It's almost like, um, I don't know. They're very, very pretty looking, some of these. So you can see some got really dry and they're fading away, but there's some new ones here that you can see how beautiful they are. And, the, you know, as the plant starts maturing, they will get bigger will be more beautiful and it will stay evergreen for the whole all year interest. All right, guys, we'll get this get planted. Okay, so I just finished planting um, everything in a containers. I think it's looking really, really good. And all I uh, all I uh, put in the holes before I plant it is just the starter fertilizer for them to keep, you know, start developing their roots well and keep it going. I haven't even watered them yet, but I'd like to go ahead and plant everything else and then I'll just water all at once. But it's looking really, really good. And I think it will bring really nice color to this uh, wall, um, you know, this time of a season. And then it will keep really nice and bushy evergreens here. It will soften this area. It will be really pretty. And then as you know here, I planted, uh, this is just a recent, I didn't do a video on these, but I did, I, I uh, placed an arbor here and uh, I planted this David Austin climbing roses, James Galloway, and I, they have a really beautiful kind of antique pink color to, to them, beautiful double, pink, double uh, roses, double petaled, and uh, I'm hoping for them to kind of climb up. Uh, it will still bring really beautiful color, and, and as you know, David Austin roses, they bloom a lot all season long. They're repeat flower, flowers, and so they have uh, repeat, they're repeat bloomers, so they're going to bring really nice color here and then I'll just continue on a little bit on the edges and maybe even just bring um, towards this area and that area because I will have a lot there will be enough for to take the, on both directions anyway I think this is going to be really pretty I have some other ideas here I have a lot of work to do still but this part is uh, this part of our our house is coming along I'm really pleased I need to just plant up the window boxes get some stuff done here last year as you guys know I backfilled this wall from the air from the soil that we dig out at the pergola area we brought in and we backfilled I need some attention I have some weeds to take out but it's okay we'll get to it it, not a problem the garden is tidy for most part it will take me just a few minutes to pick them up but the roses are doing really good this is the variety called um, Tasse de Dubril and uh, they have a gorgeous beautiful fuchsia color and I think they will fill in this area really well so it's coming together and I think it looks really really nice so let's go ahead and plant the azalea um, up next OK, 
Okay, so this is where I would like to plant the azalea. I already went ahead and uh, amended the soil with some sand, gave a good drainage uh, to keep the soil loose. It's really important. I, I'm realizing more and more that I even even when I uh, mix lots of compost and uh, etc with my soil it still gets compacted the only way to keep the soil loose is to go ahead and mix some grit or some kind of a sand sand i'm really really happy with so that i'm just continuously doing that now um, and just really quick i wanted to show you that there is a similar type of azalea right here that it's opening already which is really beautiful it has a gorgeous color this is a deciduous similar to this a little, little different variety but also there's another one yellow one as you can see right there that i planted and it's really, really very very pretty um, so this one it could be yellow i'm kind of looking at the buds it could be yellow color but it is okay yellow is always beautiful in the garden and you know, I never really cared about a yellow color, which is really weird. I don't know why I never cared about yellow color in the garden very much. And now I absolutely adore it. The minute you plant yellow, just everything gets so beautiful. I don't know. It just opens the color. It brings the brightness and beauty to the garden. So I'm going to plant this azalea right here. You see, I, see how I already amended the soil and it's... And it will stay this way. It's very good for the plants to have a good drainage. Okay, so I actually planted at the soil level. In some places, they usually say, if you have a really, really wet areas, make sure to plant them just a little above the soil level because they don't really like for their crowns to be completely in the water all the time. They do need, well, good drainage. But I noticed that in my area, every time I plant azaleas or rhododendrons, they do require lots of water. And some of them that I planted a little higher than a soil level, I needed to bring them down. And I think they, they responded to it a lot better. So you just have to kind of see, you know, what, what they like in your environment in your area and, and i was reading the tag of course it says jaune so that means I, this is actually yellow color which is perfect so okay uh let's go ahead and uh, dig up this climata that we need to transplant got look look how good it's doing though last year it started doing really well it got about this this high and then it disappeared i couldn't i thought maybe it died i don't know and then there was another one also on this side and it just really wasn't doing well then i removed them and i planted david austin rose here although eventually we'll cut out a little more branches here to give more light clear out all this stuff like we did back there however this one is um, Crown Princess Margarita, and Crown Princess Margarita, everywhere I read, they said, you know, it doesn't require lots of light, uh, it doesn't need lots of sunshine to really perform, so we'll see how it does, and if it doesn't do well, I'll just plant somewhere else, but I'm kind of, you know, waiting to see how it does here. But this Climata is going to go elsewhere. And you can see those hydrangea arborescence are coming together really well. I trimmed them a lot shorter this last season than I usually did in the previous times. But they were so young anyway when I planted. I didn't. I was really didn't want to do too much of a pruning and kind of let them grow. Let's we'll see if I can get this out. Usually, clematis needs to be planted very deep, and I'm sure that's what I did here. Ooh, I broke it, I'm sure. No. This is not a good spot. Ooh, 
look at this guy. Aren't you? I'm. So, I always get so happy when I see them in my soil. Well, here we go. I think I got it. Okay, so I'm here to plant my uh, clematis. I was able to get it out in, you know, inside when I started digging, although it looks kind of wet on the outside, maybe a couple of inches of it. Uh, underneath was very dry and very compacted. So um, that this is why it's so important to keep them, keep the uh, soil loose. And I think adding sand to the soil, it will really change that for this clematis. And you can see this clematis right here I planted you know not too long ago so this this is the other one uh, from the other side the same variety as I moved here and I moved this uh, here last spring um, and look it's already doing amazing like it's just doing really really good uh, I put the chicken wire on, a, on on this tree chicken wires are absolutely amazing to have for the clematis because they really like to to climb themselves to hook themselves up and start climbing on those little holes you could have maybe a little larger ones would be even better but I just had these laying around so it you know it works fine for me but um, anyway what I'm going to do the other one I'm going to plant right here because now this is a Ito peony so the roots will be protected underneath this peony bush which would be a really good protection for it and then as it grows on this uh, chicken wire on this tree will get more sun because afternoon sun just comes this way and it literally brightens up and this area will get sunny almost the entire day and I think this will be a really good ideal place for this clematis but also just really quick before I start that I wanted to show you this azalea which I missed out while I was taking you on a tour now this is uh, also deciduous az azalea you can see this is one of my absolute favorite ones because it has these gorgeous white uh, flowers with a, a kind of a yellow uh, throat uh, in, 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 inside of them. Uh, it's beautiful and I love it. This one is, go I think I planted last spring, maybe we did a video on this, and this year is doing really, really good. Very excited and they're not really too fussy. I think the evergreen ones to me are a little more fussier than this deciduous one. They do acclimate to all different kinds of soils, I think, a little better. Anyway, well, let's go ahead and get this planted. My shovel. All right, hang on. Okay, so I went ahead and planted. I started. Uh, I placed some starter fertilizer inside of the hole, and the clematis is going to be. So I'm going to tie a little bit um, uh, to give him direction on this uh, chicken wire. Really like using these things for the clematis. And some people say it's not a good option because it kind of breaks um, breaks the clematis because they're they're really very fragile. Um, but it does work for me. If you have other options like a velcro and some other things uh, that would work better for you do that but I really like this one because it's very delicate to me it's easy for me to maneuver and it's very easy for me to just loosely tie on a clematis and also don't tie them too um, you know keep it keep it very loose you know I just twist it really easily kind of like that and then just keep the clematis loose and that way it has a uh, you know it can move with the wind and it doesn't have to break so uh, for me I've never had problems with breaking with you know with those uh, I've never had problems so but you, again you know it is uh, all optional and if you you know there are some lots of different varieties and find out what really works for you so this is what I do can, can, can you see George so I just bring it here and I just twist them like that twist twist and there we go and you see how loose this uh, wire is if you know it's very loose so it doesn't hurt the clemata and it will hold 
its place for the most part because clematis do climb themselves. They have this um, tendrils. <laughs> you guys taught me this word because I couldn't remember last time. The tendrils, you know, it will start uh, holding itself up and climbing, unlike roses and some uh, climbing roses and some other uh, plants. Uh, clematis do attach themselves and they do climb themselves. So as long as you can keep it in check and secure a few places, for the most part, they do the work. Anyway, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. This video actually turned out to be much longer than anticipated, but I, you know, I really needed to get this done, and I'm glad that you went to this journey with me to get this uh, few couple of things done, and hopefully you enjoyed um, a little bit of a garden tour to see what's going on in the garden at the moment. You guys have a wonderful week, and please do, do not forget to subscribe to my videos as it helps my channel to grow and helps me to garden more. So I really appreciate every subscriber. Uh, have a wonderful week, and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.